All right, so uh, welcome to uh, VMG 321, uh, intro to 3D. Um, I am your uh, instructor. Unfortunately, I can't be here today because I am actually a full-time professor at another college, and they have like this thing I have to go to, so I we're doing this instead. Uh, so just follow along with this, and then, um, yeah, this is basically what I do is just do these videos here, all right? So um, first off, uh, uh, I use a website for my class. It's um, teachmecone.flywheelsites.com. So let me let's see if I just do Word. We'll do Word pads so you can see just to make it a little more obvious. Okay. So um, teachmecone.flywheelsites.com. Looks like this. Let me make it bigger so you can see it. Real big. Okay. Too big. <laughs> uh, 48? Nope, that's too, too, too big. Let's see. We'll make it, whatever. You get the idea. That doesn't work either. All right. Uh, but it's just teach me cone, like, because my name's cone. So teach me cone, C O N E dot flywheel sites dot com. All right. So, anyways. Uh, all my, uh, uh, every lesson is going to be on there. So if you go to that site, if you just type that in, it's going to bring you here. You can see I teach a bunch of different classes. So you would just go to intro to 3D. That's this guy here. Then click on class one. All right. And then you can just follow along with me if you want with this. Okay. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so I'm Jonathan Cohn. Um, I'm a full-time faculty member at Cecil College um, in Maryland, so we're not too far away from you guys. I think like half an hour. Uh, I also teach adjunct uh, at Wilmington, uh, just uh, intro to 3D, uh, character creation, and um, character rigging uh, this semester anyway. Um, so anyway, I do that, and then I also do some freelance and stuff, uh, such as it were. All right. Um, we're not going to bother doing the whole kumbaya thing here because you're not there anyway. Um, but basically this is an intro to 3D, uh, animation, um, course, right? So if the idea is just that you're going to learn how to create uh, 3D animation, uh, everything from modeling, texturing to rigging and rendering and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, this course will be using, um, canvas, uh, I use the same course for my Cecil class. That's why you'll see some of the stuff here says like it, it's got Blackboard. You guys obviously will be using um, you will be using uh, Canvas, um, but on uh, Canvas you're going to be expected to basically uh, use that. That's a requirement of the course, um, so uh, you should already know how to do that. But if we just go to WilmU, go to my WilmU, my WilmU, you should be able to log in so on and so forth. Uh, you should already know how to do all this stuff. And we wait for a long time. And then you go to Canvas. I don't know how, I imagine your guys' this thing looks the same, I'm not sure. Log into Canvas. You make everything like 12 clicks now. All right, and if you go to Courses, you'll see that you have an Intro to 3D course. And basically, we will be using uh, this for the course, okay? So the syllabus is here, if you should like to look at the syllabus you can just click on this and you will download the syllabus um, if you want to see uh, if you go to the modules each week will basically be posted here so here's the class one lecture uh, the assignment class two assignment class three so on and so forth uh, all the way down all right um, and the assignments do I have that visible I don't maybe I should make that visible um, basically you have these four assignments all right and I'll discuss that in a second all right but you will be expected to use it because that's how you're gonna um, that's how you're gonna get your assignments. That's how you're gonna submit them. You can also see the rubrics there. Um, your grades will be posted there, so you can see where those are. I'm also gonna use it for email and also announcements. So sometimes I have to drive pretty far, or actually I always have to drive pretty far. You guys are over an hour from me from my house. I live like near Baltimore, so um, sometimes traffic's bad. So if I'm gonna be a little bit late, I will uh, make an announcement, and then you guys, you know, so just make sure that you're looking at that. Um, Basically, for the assignments, there's just going to be these four, okay? Um, and more or less, each one is a step in completion of a uh, of an animated film. So basically, in the span of this 14 weeks or however long it is, you're going to model a character, um, uh, UV the character, uh, texture the character, 
rig the character, then you'll make an environment, then you'll rig the char- um, animate the character in the environment, you'll light it, you'll render it, and you'll make a short film. Something like, you know, 10 to 15 seconds, just like a one little gag thing. Um, that's basically all we're going to do is just this one short, short film. The idea here is that that way you will get the full spectrum of what like animation production is. It's not going to look great when you're done, to be honest. You'll see it's, it's a lot more difficult than you probably are expecting. Um, so, um, But it's a stepping stone, and that way you can, on your own, if you want to like, you know, really dig in deep into characters or animation or texturing or what have you, um, all those will be available to you. But each one of these assignments is part of it. So first you have to model your character, you'll have to texture your character, you'll have to model an environment, and then you will animate it and render out the film. So it's just these four films, uh, these four assignments. Um, so if you look at the modules, you'll notice that in each one of these, and this is what we're going to do each week, if you just click on, like, let's say we, well, click on, well, anyway, uh, if I click on this, right, so I'm just going to open it up in a new tab, um, I don't think it shows up here, but if you click on that, it'll actually open up, it'll open up to the class, this is what we're at, this is the day we're on right now, okay, um, that will be the lecture, so each one of these, each one of these lectures is just a link to that page, okay. But you'll also notice that also on each one is the assignment. But notice this assignment one here, assignment one here, assignment one here, uh, and assignment one here. Okay, so um, I'll give you a little bit longer on that first one. Uh, but basically the idea is that I put I post it each time. It's not actually due on this. It's just so that you realize you should be working on that. Okay, so it won't really be due until week four. Okay, and then um, or after week four. Uh, it'll be due on week five, just before week five. Uh, then it'll be texturing. You can see I only give you two weeks for that. And then there's the environment, that kind of thing. Okay, so there's only four assignments, even though they're posted on there, just so there's no confusion. But that is confusing. Anyway, um, so that's what that is. Um, uh, so obviously we're going to be covering 3D animation. One of the things I want you guys to realize is that more than likely you guys are probably looking for the entertainment aspect of it, right? So, you know, either you're thinking of films, you know, like a Pixar film, where there's like animation production, or you're thinking games, right? You want to make uh, the the assets for your video games, visual effects, that sort of thing. That's a very small sliver in the full spectrum. There's a lot of other things that animation is used for. Visualization is like a huge one. So if someone's going to make a building, they'll, uh, they'll do architectural visualizations of the building if they're trying to get the contract. Like, hey, this is what it will look like. And They'll do like a flyover and then use CG to like implant their their you know uh, vision of what that building would look like, and it's worth it to them because these are you know multi million dollar contracts. It's worth it to them to pay you to make this visualization. Medical visualizations are really big, uh, both for um, teaching um, uh, medical students uh, and other things. Um, legal. I knew a guy that he um, sometimes if there's a, a lawsuit. People will do a visualization of what happened. So I saw this. Uh, he was a colleague of mine, and he actually animated. It was like a truck that like accidentally dumps like these uh, containers off of it. It looked like a dump truck kind of a thing, and it was the crappiest, dumbest looking animation. Um, but it's you know if that's going to help their case, it's definitely worth it to pay you a couple thousand to make you know this stupid. Oh, the containers fell on my dog, and then you can sue them. So. Um, scientific, that's another big one. Products, uh, I used to work at Fisher Price. So, um, one of the things we do there is you do like sizzlers to try and sell whatever the product is. Um, whenever anybody makes a game or a toy or, you know, uh, you know, like, uh, ShamWow or any one of those, uh, uh, products you see on TV, right? They have little visualizations of those products, um, to help sell them. Okay. Um, there's also, and this is becoming bigger and bigger, are these fringe experimental ones where the stuff up here that we're doing now used to be fringe. Now it's kind of mainstream. But obviously virtual reality is getting bigger and bigger. I'm sure you guys saw that uh, Valve's going to get into the market now. They're, they made a, a Half-Life game, uh, which looks, I think it's a prequel. looks pretty interesting. Um, 3D printing is huge. They're actually using it for, like, medical things. Um, people are 3D printing replacement, um, you know... Um, hips and things like that and they can make them custom you know um the military is using 3d printing there's all sorts of different there's a that's like a whole nother area holograms you know we're seeing that uh pop up uh but there's a lot of different things that are coming out there uh it's one of the reasons why it's important to be um 
prepared for, you know, uh, just to have a general knowledge of everything, because that way you'll be prepared to learn new things. You know, these are newer technologies. Um, okay, so let's talk about 3D film production. So the animation production basically can kind of be broken down to these three primary stages, right? So you have pre-production, production, and post-production. Now, pre-production basically is everything that goes into the film, but you don't, it doesn't actually show up in the film, but it actually has probably the largest uh, influence on it. Okay, so what that would be would be, you know, character designs, um, the, uh, the script, the storyboard, um, things like that, right? Um, they're going to determine what the whole film's going to be, but they're not actually in the film. Production's actually making those things. So, you know, modeling the characters, the environment, rigging the characters, the animation, um, rendering the footage and lighting it. Post-production is basically just cutting everything together, right? So just after you have your footage that you take out of um, Maya uh, or whatever program you're using, um, and generally you don't have to do a lot with the editing. It's usually just like little special effects. Um, it's a lot of compositing for 3D. You'll render out different passes of the same scene. So like one that's just color and one that's just shadow and one that's just specular highlights and one that's like an alpha of an effect. And you'll layer those all together to get the final look. Um, and then sound design, okay? So um, generally speaking, we're really going to be concentrating just on this one here, but, you know, those are the two ideas here. So we're just kind of trying to do an overview. So uh, the idea, all right? So the first thing you need to do, and, and you should always be doing this all the time. I'm, I'm hoping that you are. If you're in um, a creative field, you should always be trying to think of new ideas, new things that, um, depending on what it is. So it could be a story idea or a game idea or whatever you're into. Um, you should be constantly, you know, when you're idle, don't be idle in your brain. Be thinking about, you know, how you can come up with something interesting and new and novel and different um, that, you know, will stand out because that's a lot of what you're trying to do. So I'm just going to use uh, what I actually did for my thesis film uh, from a master's degree. Uh, I did a, an animated film about my chinchilla. So I'm just going to kind of describe it in regards to that. So um, when I was in college, I had uh, a chinchilla named Chinchi. Very creative name, I know. Uh, this is him. He's a very cute little chinchilla, right? It's uh, he's so cute, he'd make God puke. Okay, so anyway, we got this uh, this fat chinchilla, and um, at the time, I was uh, um, engaged to uh, my wife, and um, you know, I was you know, I was happy, and I was like, oh, you know, I should get. Uh, I, I wanted him to have a friend because he was just by himself. So we were looking for you know, girls chinchilla, and we end up getting this girl chinchilla. And I don't know how good looking, I don't know what good looking Jill looks like, but she was kind of plain and she was also like one and a half times his size. Uh, first thing he did was like try to fix her face when he first saw her. And she ended up being, we put them both in the cage and she was just really mean. She was always nagging him. And it occurred to me that he was kind of in a prison. <laughs> like he was trapped in this thing with her. And I saw this parallel with my own life and getting married. And I was like, huh. <laughs> like, so, um... Uh, that became the idea for the film. The, the point I want to make about this is that whatever you do, if you can somehow put a grain of truth to it, um, it will show up in it. It will show up in the work because it'll be more relatable. You'll be more invested in it. Um, and it, uh, it's just, it's just better. It's just more believable. Um, most of the time, the directors have a pretty heavy hand into whatever the, the core concept is. So anyways, you need an idea. The next thing you do is you make a script. Now, in our case, if you're doing a, a game or an animation, it's usually very, very simple. Um, so uh, often we'll just do a treatment, and all that literally means it's like a one to three paragraph summary of what the story is. Um, it's a visual medium, so you're going to do most of the story with storyboards. Uh, if you look at Disney films, the um, the first Disney film that actually had a script was Beauty and the Beast. All of the films before that had no script. They were all just storyboards. Um, even like SpongeBob, for instance. You know, they have like, they'll say, for each episode, it has like the name of the episode, the director, blah, blah, blah. And one of them's the writer. A, a, the writer literally writes one sentence. That's the script. It's a one sentence thing. And all the rest of it's done through storyboard. So the script is actually not as important. It's just to kind of get the idea down. All right. Um, then after that, and these can kind of happen concurrently, uh, is that you might do the art design and the general art direction where you're trying to design the characters. Uh, for 3D, it's a really good idea to do a turnaround sketch, actually for 2D for that matter too, but um, it's applicable for both because we can use these as image planes for our characters, uh, which is beneficial. Um, 
Then you do the storyboard, which basically you just, you already probably know what that is. It's like a comic book. Um, you know, it's just a sequential visual guide of what the, the, the thing is going to be. Now, if your film or whatever it is, if it doesn't work in a storyboard, if you cannot show this to a lay person and they do not understand what's happening, it's not going to work when you actually go into production. So if this, th you should spend the most time on this part, okay? Once you finish the storyboard, you do the animatic. Um, and the animatic is basically, this used to be a GIF or a GIF, depending on who you are. Um, but uh, it's not moving anymore. So anyway, uh, the um, but basically it's just a storyboard over time. So it's kind of like an animated version of it. All right. Now, um, so that's all the pre-production. Now, for our intents and purposes, we're not really doing pre-production, so it's not a big deal. But just be aware that pre-production is probably the most important aspect if you're making a film because it's really it's the idea it's everything else. Um, the other stuff is just the frosting on the cake. Um, to put it in perspective, if uh, a typical like Pixar film takes anywhere from like four to five years, they usually spend a year to two year or I'm sorry, a year and a half to two years on the storyboard, just the pre-production phase. Um, even when they made Shrek, uh, Vicky Jensen, which was a co-director of the film, the, the first one, she said um, that she was originally a storyboard artist and they were making the film when she, she was the storyboard artist. Uh, it was originally going to be an action film, but then everyone was coming up with all these different cool ideas so uh, that were comical. And so it ended up turning into this comedy instead. Um, when she became director and they switched from being an action to a comedy, they were already four years into production. They hadn't animated a single thing. So they went four years in pre-production. So just to give you an idea. And that obviously ended up being a very successful film. Um, but that's because they spent that time to you know let it gestate. All right. So after that, you do modeling. So you model the characters uh, and the sets. Then you do surfacing. So obviously, this is a flat shaded model. If you wanted to have like color and bumpiness and, and paint the shininess and things like that, uh, that's all part of the surfacing. All right. Uh, rigging, you put the various controllers, um, joints, and things like that that allow you to manipulate um, the model uh, at the component level. Um, layout is taking all of the elements, so the rig, uh, you know, character rigs, the models, all that stuff, and slapping them all together and putting them in the scene, adding the cameras, doing really basic block animation, just so you get an idea. It's kind of like making the animatic, but in 3D. Uh, animation, you know what that is, is obviously animating thing. Then you do lighting and rendering, you light and render the scene, then you composite it together. Uh, so if you have multiple rendered sequences, you put them together, editing, uh, and sound design. All right. So, um, from this point, we are going to switch gears. Oh, this doesn't work anymore. Um, and, um, we're going to, uh, open up Maya. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to stop this video and start another video and we will, um, just kind of get used to Maya and then, um, get ready for next week. Okay.